always strange looking at a big picture of yourself on a screen. Um, good morning, everyone. Congratulations on everyone making it here. You're almost as intrepid as some of the space entrepreneurs that I'm going to be talking about. Um, so I was hoping to spend some time with you this morning, both introducing myself and my funds, uh, but actually more importantly, telling you all about the exciting innovation that's happening within, within space tech. So, space is cool again, which is great from my perspective. Um, if it's good enough for Hollywood, it's got to be good enough for, for a, venture, a venture community. Um, it's also an area that you're seeing significant amounts of investment from leading tech billionaires. I'm sure some of the people in the room will be familiar with Elon Musk and his exploits at SpaceX. He's not alone. You've got the founders of everything from Amazon uh, through to Microsoft who are putting huge amounts of their personal wealth into trying to move forwards um, with, uh, with the space tech ecosystem. So why are the billionaires spending all of their money on space? And this is another reason why on earth would a venture capitalist be looking to, to, to operate in this area? Well, for a very simple reason. The space industry is going through its PC moment as we speak. As recently as 10 years ago, a satellite would have been billions of dollars and hundreds if not thousands of kilos. And yet, 10 short years later, we're now seeing satellites that are built of the same kind of componentry that you find in the mobile phones in your, your pocket. And as a consequence, it can now cost as low as 10,000 or thousands of dollars in order to actually build a satellite. So this is a fundamental change in terms of how much it costs to build and get something into, into space. You can think of this as being analogous to the transition from mainframe computers to personal computers in, in the 90s and the huge waves of innovation that followed off, off the back of that. So because things are getting cheaper, they're also getting much more attractive from an investment perspective because unlike historically where space was um, pretty anathema to uh, the kind of things that venture capitalists like myself look for, the new wave of, of, of innovation in space, which is often referred to uh, rather unimaginatively as new space, um, uh, has many of the same attributes that we, you would look as an investor in any area of, of technology. So what do I mean by that? Well, I've already talked about affordability. Um, speed is absolutely crucial. You can now design, build, and get something launched into orbit in a, in a matter of 12 months. There's much more of a focus of, on software rather than hardware. Um, and crucially, the innovation in this sector is now being driven for the first time by entrepreneurs like some of the people in, in this building. And people like myself are, are slowly catching up. So there has been a very significant increase in the amount of money being invested into the space tech, space sector by VCs in the last couple of years. So you can see on this chart, in simple terms, in the last two years, there's been more money invested into this space than the previous 15 years combined. And the reason that venture capitalists like myself are investing in this area is because there is an amazing ecosystem that is flourishing both in the UK and on a global basis. So this picture here, which is from our own research, gives you a sense of just how many companies there, there are that are springing up right across the space tech ecosystem. Which brings me on to, to my fund, Seraphim Capital. So we're very proud that we are the only venture fund globally that is a specialist investor in the space tech industry. Uh, our latest fund, which is around 70 million pounds, has backing from some of the leading space corporates in Europe, most notably the likes of Airbus, SES, and Telespazio. We have a strategic relationship with uh, the European Space Agency and are also backed um, by the, the British Business Bank. Really importantly, beside myself and some other um, fairly battle-hardened venture capitalists, our team now also includes two of the space tech industry's leading entrepreneurs. Uh, we have Michael Jones, who is the, the founder of, of a business that was sold to, to Google and became Google Earth. So he's one of very few people globally who scaled a business that relies on space data to billions of monthly users. We also now have Matt O'Connell, who was previously the CEO of a business called GOI, which was one, one of the leading Earth uh, observation imaging businesses, which he scaled to hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue and sold to Digital Globe for, for billions of dollars. So we like to think that what we're doing is bringing together the, the best of breed in terms of the entrepreneurs from this sector, 
and having the support of the, the major industry incumbents to really support and drive the ecosystem that, that we're looking to invest into. Uh, we do invest globally, but we naturally have a, a, a bias, particularly on days like this, of wanting to invest relatively close to home. We're a Series A investor, so that normally means that we're the first or second um, institutional investor to invest in a company. Uh, we're typically investing in a stage that a company has already developed some technology and is at least close to getting to the point of being able to sell it to, to, to people. In addition to the fund, we've also recognized that there are a number of other parts of the ecosystem that really needed our support. So we've done a couple of other in initiatives that I wanted to just touch on. Um, we've, uh, we have a long heritage of working with the angel community in the UK and Europe, and as part of that, we've set up something called both UK Space Tech Angels and EBAN Space. So these are specialist business angel networks made up of successful entrepreneurs and executives from the space sector that are backing businesses that are perhaps a little bit too early for, for my fund. Uh, that's been running for a year. There were six events last year, and you can see there that a, a total of seven companies have, have raised about a million pounds each um, with additional support from grant funding from the European Space Agency. Uh, in addition to this, we recognize that companies even earlier than that also need our, our support. So uh, we're in the process of, of launching the world's first space tech focused accelerator, imaginatively named Space Camp, um, uh, which is going to be really about helping companies get investment ready but also engage with some of our corporate backers at a very early stage to try and get some early proof of concepts. Uh, so we're gonna be selecting the first cohort of companies, six companies in the course of the next couple of months with uh, the program kicking off in, in April. Okay, I wanted to spend a couple of minutes of explaining how we look at the, the, the space sector. Um, people always assume that we're really looking for things around the next Elon Musk. I'd love it if he's out there. If, if he is, please put it, or she, please put their hand up. Um, but rockets and things like asteroid mining aren't really where we're, where we're focused. Uh, we see all of those things as the outward-looking element of the space sector, whereas we are very focused on what we see as being the downward-looking uh, element. So really, our key focus is in backing businesses that are connecting, communicating, and observing the Earth from, from above. And as you can see on this chart, that's not just satellites. It's also UAVs, it's drones, it's high-altitude pseudo-satellites. Why do we include airborne platforms? Well, for a very simple reason. Customers don't care how you're solving their problems. They don't really want to buy a satellite image. They don't want to talk about satellites. They just want you to fix a problem for them. And in many instances, that involves a collaboration between drones and satellites. Uh, we also invest in a whole range of different building blocks that enable the ecosystem and are very keen to find businesses that understand that they need to focus on particular verticals and solving particular pain points. Uh, I won't dwell on this, this is just how, a bit more detail on, on how we look at the, the world. So what is it that we look for in, in, in businesses and entrepreneurs? So there's some, some key themes here, one of which is really important, which is where hardware is the tool and data the business. So if you think about someone that's putting up a constellation of very small satellites, um, the hardware is how they generate data, but it's actually the value in analyzing that data that is the way that they drive, uh, they drive value in their business. We like people that are collecting proprietary data sets, and we like people that are de developing defensible uh, IP. We also like businesses that recognize they need to be vertically integrated, so I've alluded to this already. You collect the data, but then you also need to analyze it and turn it into a product as, uh, as, as, as well. Uh, and then general things, we obviously look to back fantastic teams and try to focus on areas where we think there's a very significant market opportunity. So the, uh, in, in the 18 months since we've been running the, the fund, we've now looked at over 1,500 companies globally, which hopefully gives you some kind of indication of, of the breadth of innovation that we see. So that includes over 40 companies that are looking to launch constellations. It's 40, more than 40 companies that are doing interesting things with analyzing the data that's coming from all these satellites. And it's lots of drone companies. During that time, we've made five, five investments, uh, which I thought it would be worthwhile to just give you an, a flavor of the kind of innovation that we're seeing, just to give you some examples. So Spire is one of the, the world's leading new space companies. They now have 58 satellites uh, up, in, up in orbit that cost less than $100,000 each. To put this in context, there are only five countries around the world that have ever launched more satellites than Spire. They're using these, these satellites um, to do a whole range of different things, which is, easy, is best summarized as listening to the planet. 
So they listen and are able to track all of the ships that are moving around the world. They'll soon be able to do the same with aircraft. And they're the first company ever to be able to collect commercial grade weather data from space. You can see here in the picture, this is their map of being able to track the heartbeat of trade around the world. This is the movement of all of, uh, all of the ships. Uh, ISI is, um, is, is a European company backed by two very young entrepreneurs who've made a conscious decision to start a space, uh, a space business. So they're launching um, a constellation of small satellites doing something called synthetic aperture radar. Put simply, this is using radar to be able to image at night and through the clouds from space. Uh, ISI is a great example of all the innovation that's happening in this area in that they have done something that the industry thought was impossible, namely getting one of these satellites that's a hundredth of the size and the cost up into, up into orbit, thereby drastically reducing the cost of being able to access the kind of imagery that you can see on the left. Uh, I've alluded to drones being an area that's really of interest to us. So at Nightingale Security has an autonomous drone system. So you can see there one of their drones in, in its hangar. Um, that's focused on physical security. So this is really cutting edge technology that um, has capabilities of, of drones being able to fly autonomously, uh, both individually and in concert as, as part of a, a swarm, which is uh, an area that we think is gonna be very uh, interesting over the next few years. Uh, Altitude Angel is a, is a Reading-based business that is doing air traffic control software for, for, for drones. So again, we're interested in businesses that are enabling building blocks for large ecosystems. In much the same way as today, planes have to be tracked um, through air traffic control towers. If you're gonna have millions of drones flying around delivering our parcels uh, in the future and flying autonomously, you need an equivalent system. And that's what Altitude Angel does. Uh, and lastly, Trans Robotics, who have uh, developed incredible technology to turn the Wi-Fi chip that's in every one of uh, your, your smartphones into a radar. Um, what that means is that suddenly all forms of autonomous systems can actually see and do so with, with accuracy. This is a key pain point in terms of the advent of any autonomous system. Okay, so just to, to wrap up, um, our observations in terms of being the only specialist in this area is there is a tremendous amount uh, of innovation, both in breadth and depth, and crucially, it is happening on a global basis. Uh, we're seeing growing amounts of investor appetite from VCs. I've talked about how much extra funding is coming into, into the market, which we see as being a very positive sign. Um, on a more cautionary note, um, the whole concept of new space and the ability to build sizable and sustainable businesses based on satellites the size of a shoebox made out of components that go in your mobile phone um, is yet to really be proved out. We're obviously big believers and expect in the next few years to see breakout successes in this area, including hopefully some of the British businesses that we're backing. All right, thank you very much.